Good morning, dear stockholders. This here meeting is hereby called to order. Mr. Secretary, please confirm that the definitive information statement and notice of today's meeting were provided to the stockholders of record. Yes, Mr. Chairman. In accordance with the requirements of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the definitive information statement a notice of today's annual stockholders meeting were submitted to the PSE Edge, posted on the company's website, and published in print and online format in at least two newspapers of general circulation at least 21 days before today's meeting. The agenda of today's meeting is currently shown on the screen. Mr. Secretary, do we have a quorum for the transaction of business? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Based on the certification of the corporation stock and transfer agent of the total thirteen billion two hundred seventy-seven million four hundred seventy thousand outstanding common shares and entitled to vote, there are at least seventy point eighty-seven percent of the corporations outstanding common stock, capital stock, and entitled to vote are present through remote communication or by proxy at today's annual meeting of the stockholders. A quorum therefore exists for the transaction of business. Mr. Chairman, I would also like to inform our shareholders that all the incumbent members of the Board of Directors are present today via remote communication from their respective locations. Mr. Chairman, we will present later the various agenda items which were approved by the stockholders through proxy voting and voting in absentia. We will now proceed with the management report. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chairman and President Mr. Isidro A. Konsunhi will now render a report on the 2020 operations and current situation of the corporation. Valued shareholders, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, again, good morning and welcome to the virtual annual stockholders meeting of DMSA Holdings. Wherever you are connecting from, I hope that you and your family are doing well. COVID-19 has taken an immense toll on our nation. In honor of the lives lost, in support of our frontliners and families who are struggling because of this pandemic, let us pause for a moment and offer a silent prayer. At this point, let me now proceed with a summary of our 2020 performance and business outlook. Our consolidated results demonstrate the resiliency of our investment portfolio. Despite the natural disasters, lockdowns, and economic fallout from COVID-19, our company remained profitable and operating cash flow positive. Consolidated revenues fell by 23% to 67.7 billion pesos, while net income dropped by 44% to 5.9 billion pesos. The declines were mainly due to weak contributions from Seminar Mining and Power Corporation, DMCI Homes, and Mainilad. Excluding non recurring items, our core net income dropped by 48% to 6.6 billion. The pandemic and resulting quarantine restrictions have been hardest on our construction business. Net income contribution from DMC Consunhi Incorporated slumped by 88% to 109 million pesos as the 76-day lockdown led to lower construction accomplishments. This year, we expect a strong bounce back from DMCI, 
given the substantial order book, additional workers, and increased barracks capacity. Productivity is also higher because unlike last year, essential and priority infrastructure projects are allowed to continue even during ECQ. DSI Homes contributed 1.4 billion pesos, a 55% drop due to higher costs, one-time losses from project sales cancellations and lower construction productivity, owing to the ECQ and the MECQ. Excluding non-recurring items, the core income contribution fell by 36% to 1.9 billion pesos. We expect DMCA Homes to do better this year because of its considerable unrecognized revenues, higher construction productivity, and resource optimization efforts. However, softening demand from mid-segment projects because of job insecurity and unemployment could negatively impact its profitability by 2023. We remain optimistic that our resort type developments can sustain buyers' interest amidst work from home arrangements. Net income contribution from SMPC declined by 65% to 1.9 billion pesos as quarantine restrictions dragged down demand and the prices of coal and electricity. Including the impairment loss of 157 million pesos for a gas turbine plant, core income contribution declined to 2 billion pesos. This year, we expect earnings to improve because of better market conditions. However, the water CPGs of Molave and North Block 7 and the protracted outage of Kalakai Unit 2 will temper company's results. DMCI Power contributed 537 million pesos, down by 12% because of the absence of a one-time retroactive non-fuel tariff adjustment of 113 million pesos for the Palawan plant. However, excluding this one-off item, its net income increased by 8% due to higher electricity sales across all its markets. Despite the pandemic, DMCI Power is moving forward with its expansion plans. It has started construction of a 15 megawatt thermal plant in Palawan, which will help stabilize electricity supply in the area. It is also building a 4 megawatt hybrid solar diesel plant in Masbate that is targeted for commercial operation by 2022. DMCI mining beat the downtrend and grew its income contribution by 133% to 483 million pesos. This was due to the simultaneous operation of its Palawan and Sambales mines, coupled with the higher average selling price because of strong China demand and continuing ban on Indonesian ore, ore exports. The recent signing of the Executive Order Number 130 bodes well for our nickel business, especially with the depletion of our Birong mine by next month. If all of its pending MPSA applications are approved, the MCA mining can increase its reserves by 276 million wet metric tons, which translates to 20 years worth of nickel sales at our current production rates. Net income share from Mainilad dropped by 13% to 1.5 billion pesos due to non-implementation of its approved 2020 tariff adjustment and lower average effective tariff, which declined as a result of the prolonged community quarantine. Higher amortization and depreciation expenses from continued infrastructure investments also cut into its bottom line. Manila has received a copy of the Manila Waters revised concession agreement from the government panel. While we want to sign a revised con contract soon, we also hope that the final version will take into account the material differences between the two concessionaires. COVID-19 has been 
a litmus test of our stakeholder commitment, and I believe we have done well in this regard. Last March 29, the Board approved and declared regular and special cash dividends totaling 48 centavos per share. Payment was made last April 26. Our total dividend payment of 6.37 billion pesos translates to a dividend payout ratio of 97%, which is our second highest level in 10 years. When our people needed us most, we were there to support them. We did not retrench any employees and even hired additional personnel and workers during the year. We did what we could to protect our workforce and provide assistance to those in need, as highlighted on your screen. To safely navigate this pandemic, we have adopted a COVID-19 strategy that covers our people, finances, and execution skills. To know more about our strategy and how our businesses are implementing it, I encourage you to read our 2020 annual report. As part of our pandemic response, we ordered more than 30,000 jobs for our employee vaccination program. Taking into account the un unfortunate manufacturing and shipping delays, we expect our vaccination rollout to start sometime in the fourth quarter of this year. In the meantime, we have been encouraging our employees to avail of the government vaccine should they become available to them. Well, much of our focus last year was our people. We also took a number of steps to manage our ESG performance. Flash on our screen are some of the highlights, which you can learn more in our sustainability report. Our ESG efforts have not gone unnoticed, and I am pleased to share that DMC Holdings, Samarara, DMC Power, and Barong Nickel Corporation all garnered recognition for their exemplary performance. We believe that our companies can stage a recovery this year on the back of higher construction productivity and better market conditions. However, a return to normality and pre-pandemic profitability is unlikely given what's happening in our country. We also expect operational headwinds to persist for Semerara and Maynilad. The water seepage issue in Mulave North Block 7 and prolonged force outage of Unit 2 will have a significant impact on Semerara's bottom line. As for Maynilad, a tariff freeze is likely to remain in place until December 31, 2022. And until a new contract is signed, it cannot make any long-term dividend commitments to its investors. Before I end my report, I would like to thank our board of directors, shareholders, customers, suppliers, regulators, and hope communities for their faith and support in our, to our company. But most of all, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to our employees, workers, and business partners. In the face of unprecedented adversity, we made painful sacrifices and soldiered on. As a result, we were able to generate and deliver value to our stakeholders. I am proud of what we accomplished and look forward to the time when we can celebrate as a group. Until then, please stay healthy and safe. Ladies and gentlemen, Living through the pandemic has exposed us to immense suffering and losses. But it has also taught us a lot about humanity, solidarity, and hope. I have seen firsthand how our companies embrace these lessons, and I believe that what we have learned will stay with us long after the pandemic. Thank you for attending our annual stockholders meeting. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For better appreciation of the company's operations, the stockholders were given access to the definitive information statement. For better use of the time, 
we requested the shareholders to send by email their questions prior to this meeting. We will answer some of the questions we received at today's meeting. The first question is as follows. When do you expect the company to return to pre-pandemic profit levels? Considering that the vaccine rollout is only starting, it will probably end maybe by the first quarter of next year. So the side effects of this uh, pandemic will probably end up to the end of 2022. So pre-pandemic economic conditions will probably begin at 2023. The second question reads as follows. Will the cement business push through now that the moratorium on MPSAs has been lifted? The ban on MPSA has been lifted. However, it doesn't mean to say that our application will be uh, approved or acted upon immediately. We hope so, and if as such, after all the permits are given, we think that the cement plant should be running within three months, three years rather, of uh, the start of construction. The next question is, which industries are the company bullish within the next three years and why? DMCA Power will probably continue with steady growth. DMCA Mining will also continue uh, because uh, as long as the Indonesian ore ban continues and today's uh, Chinese bu very Buddhist market I hope will stay uh, uh, buoyant. The MCI homes will probably be back uh, to its pre-pandemic level by 2023. The MCI construction probably next year if we win some of the big ticket item in the build, build, build program of the, of the government. My NILAD will probably be on track by the end of this year because we are hopeful that the revised concession agreement will be shortly approved. Semirara will have a bounce back this year because coal prices has gone up, but the prices of electricity is going to be down and the projection is it will probably remain low for the next two or three years. So it may not attain pre-pandemic uh, profitability, but probably 75% of what it attained before. The last question is, does the MCI intend to participate in more build, build, build projects? Yes, we intend to participate in build, build, build projects, but as a joint venture partner and or as a subcontractor, considering that these projects will not, will not allow the MCI to participate as, as a single entity. Uh, JICA requires uh, Japanese uh, participation and the pre-qualification requirements of ADB will necessarily involve foreign partners. For the other questions which we are not able to read today, the company will respond individually by email. Further, we shall also include these questions and answers in the minutes of today's annual meeting. Mr. Chairman, shown on the screen is the summary of the tabulation of votes cast in absentia and by proxy in favor of the following items of the agenda. Number one, approval of the minutes of the previous annual stockholders meeting. Number two, management report. Number three, ratification of acts of directors and officers. Number four, appointment of external auditors. 
Number five, re-election of Mr. Antonio Jose, you, Periquet, as independent directors. Number six, re-election of Mr. Honorio O. Reyes Lau as independent director. A detailed discussion on each of the above agenda items was provided in the definitive information statement and the rationale for the agenda items was also provided in the notice of today's annual meeting. Considering that more than 50% of Standing Commons capital stock voted in favor of the proposed resolutions, the same are deemed approved. Mr. Chairman, for the election of directors, the corporation received a total of seven nominees for regular directors and two nominees for independent directors, namely regular directors Isidro A. Consunhi, Cesar A. Buenaventura, Jorge A. Consunhi, Herbert M. Consunhi, Maria Edwina C. Laperal, Luz Consuelo A. Consunhi, Maria Cristina C. Gutianon, Independent Directors, Honorio O. Reyes Lau, Antonio Jose U. Periquet. The stockholders were able to cast their votes on the election of directors in absentia or by proxy. Based on the tabulation of both cast in absentia and by proxy, the nominees receive the number of both cast opposite their respective names as shown on the screen. There being no other valid nominations, the said individuals are hereby elected as directors for the current term. Are there any other matters to be taken up? There are no other matters listed on the agenda. Since there are no other matters to be taken up, this meeting is now adjourned. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's meeting.